what really happens to our brains when we sleep? Will there ever be a day when our dreams can actually be recorded and then let us know? Let's hope not. Dana Arshin <laughs> literally went to sleep to find out in this month's big idea. We all do it every night, whether we're aware of it or not. On average, if you're sleeping well, my dream three or four times a night. Dreaming, what does it mean? And what happens to our brains when we're in a dream state? Press on it. At the Center for Sleep Medicine at Lenox Hill Hospital, I dared to dream. Technicians hooked me up to about 40 different wires all over my body. It was a way for Dr. Stephen Feinsilver to track my brain waves and monitor my sleep cycles while I spent the night in his lab. People have the idea that Sleep is a time where you just turn your brain off for seven or eight hours, turn it back on. It's much more complicated than that. Dr. Feinsilver says there's a reason our brains create dream periods, also called REM periods, throughout the night. It's bad for your brain to be to turned off for a long period of time. And sleep is like turning your brain off. Ordinary sleep is. So because it's bad, your brain kind of recharges its batteries by turning itself on, doing something fairly random for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then going back to normal sleep. Dr. Philip Watson is a senior neuropsychologist at Northwell Health. He says there's a reason our dreams sometimes seem so real. What happens to your brain during dreaming is that a lot of the areas in your brain become activated, uh, specifically areas involved in sensory processing, like visual processing, uh, and areas involved in motor processing. And that helps to create the realism that we experience during dreams. Scientists and researchers from all over the world are now trying to bring that realism to a whole new level. Daniel Oldis is an independent dream researcher who wrote a book in the 1970s called The Lucid Dream Manifesto. Since then, he's worked with the University of Texas to create technology that would record our dreams. He and his partners use electromyography or EMG sensors to measure speech and movements in dreams. What we did is we basically took the data stream from the sensors on your arms, legs, uh, under your chin, and basically fed those into a computer program. Back at Lenox Hill, I woke up with all my wires intact, ready to hear my data that was fed into a computer program. You slept for about five and a half hours. Over the course of the night, I snored lightly at times and had irregular breathing. That means I have mild sleep apnea, but nothing to worry about. About five times an hour, you stop or slow down your breathing, but not total stopping. It happened much more in almost entirely in dreaming sleep. During my overnight stay at Lenox Hill, I didn't remember any of my dreams. That's because Dr. Feinsilver says the only way to remember is if you wake up in the middle of or very close to a REM cycle. That's not easy to do because REM cycles usually take up only about a quarter of your sleep. On this graph here, the red parts are dreaming sleep. When you go from dreaming back into non-dreaming sleep, you're very likely to forget the whole dream. If I were to wake you up here and ask, okay, quick, tell me about your dream, you'd probably be able to tell me all about it. As for Daniel Aldis, he's restless in his research. In just 10 to 20 years from now, he thinks dreamers will have a whole lot to look forward to. They'll go to sleep with a headband on and a chin strap. The chin strap will measure the speech. The headband will measure the images in the brain. They'll sleep in pajamas that have built-in sensors to capture muscle movements. And all this will be streamed to your computer or your, or your phone or your iPad or whatever and converted into a movie. And then you can upload that to YouTube and uh, see if you get a whole bunch of likes. So make sure you know how to cut and edit video because when the time comes, you might not want your strangest thoughts and images shared with the world. Dana Arshin, Fox 5 News.